I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us for our seven day Pacific wide update. And we start off with the South Pacific where there's a lot of low pressure at the moment. We've got one, two, three low pressure zones and basically over the next seven days, they're gonna spread out and reform and be stuck there. Meanwhile, further to the south, down around New Zealand, there's a lot of high pressure. So between the two, a windy easterly carries on, but for the tropical islands, it is going to be tropical with this humid airflow coming down from the equator, producing thunderstorms, low pressure, but probably not seeing any tropical cyclones for the next week because all these lows kind of steal energy off each other and that helps minimize the risk of a tropical storm. So let's have a look at uh, Wednesday, at least Wednesday, Fiji time, Tuesday over here in the Cook Islands. Low pressure stuck here just south of Niue and it stretches all the way up to the northern part of Tonga. And then over here, we've got this other low pressure zone around the Fiji area. Further out to the east, French Polynesia looking pretty dry at the moment, just a few thunderstorms in the mix, your usual kind of stuff. Nothing too serious though uh, going on. And Norfolk Island, easterly winds, not as humid for you. Pretty mild conditions, just a couple of showers around, but mostly dry. And in fact, a fairly dry week coming up because of that high pressure belt further down around New Zealand. So as we move through uh, over the next day or so, low pressure drifts further down. Most of the heavy rain south of Rarotonga, uh, you had a stormy, logo through the other day it was almost a named tropical cyclone didn't quite get there but it, the winds did get up to cyclone um, strength for a time but as you can see here as we go through the week low pressure drags out and so that means plenty of instability when that when you don't have a, a storm these low pressure belts basically just drive in thunderstorms and instability so you get those big uh, downpours and thundery conditions at the afternoons and the evenings and then it kind of drops back a little bit overnight and then it reforms again once the sun comes back up. So we're seeing that across this week as these lows track along. I mean, this is an interesting map here for the end of the week. You've got a low south of French Polynesia, a very small one. Another one here south of the Cook Islands. Another one southwest of the Cook Islands. Uh, another one here just south of Samoa. Another one over near Vanuatu. And another one over towards the far north Queensland. So it's a very active map. But because they've all kind of linked arms, they're all sort of sharing the energy. So you're not seeing one of them take all the energy and turn into a tropical cyclone. And Norfolk Island still to the south of it all, easterly winds for you, mostly dry. Doesn't change much going into Saturday uh, either. So as we go into the start of the weekend, although Friday on this side of the screen, actually, good point about that. I was just thinking about this when I was setting up the video. I don't think there's any other weather forecaster in the world, and I might be wrong, but I can't think of any that do a weather forecast where on the screen it splits between the two different days. It's quite complicated sometimes. Um, I guess if you're, in your, if you're in your lane and you know what day you're on, it's, it's okay. But for me, sometimes just explaining it can be a little bit tricky. Um, so I hope you understand that. But obviously along about this line eastwards or around Samoa eastwards, you start to get those different time zones. So here we are on Saturday on the western left-hand side of the screen and plenty of low pressure still around, but none of it is really stormy. So the only storms you'll be seeing will be isolated thunderstorms. Otherwise, those winds, they're not really too bad. Um, the easterly flow gets stronger down here, but no one lives down here. And around the Cook Islands, that low pressure zone just drives in a bit of wind and rain, otherwise not looking too bad. By the time we get to Sunday, um, which is Saturday for the eastern side of Samoa, for the American Samoa, uh, you've got the easterly wind coming through, and that will help actually clear away some of those showers. Similar story over in French Polynesia, and the northern part of the Cook Islands, but it's still wet around Niue. Tonga is the driest of all of the main islands over the next uh, seven days. And Vanuatu seeing plenty of wet weather, plenty of thunderstorms due to that lingering low pressure. It doesn't change here as we kick off next week as well. Uh, and neither does the low leave south of the Cook Islands that are still there at the end of your weekend. So our final map here, which is for Tuesday on the left-hand side of the screen, Monday for the right-hand side of the screen, shows drier conditions around the Cook Islands, easterly winds for French Polynesia, easterly winds around Samoa, and mostly dry in Tonga, fairly dry in Fiji, but still wet around the um, Vanuatu area and to some degree getting into New Caledonia. Let's go to the Northern Hemisphere now. We've got a storm coming out of um, Japan, moving up over the next few days. It's not too bad, but the Northern side of Japan certainly getting some colder weather. And then once that passes through, um, 
most of the island, or most of the island nation, I should say, gets uh, gets that colder airflow. The other system around Hawaii, out here to the west, it's sort of stuck offshore, probably not driving in much in the way of rain. The high to the north, pushing in an easterly for you there. Another interesting note, uh, uh, fact to note, is this low pressure belt coming in here around California. Once again, Los Angeles, San Francisco, seeing wet weather. They've had a remarkably wet year so far. So another system coming in for you. So it's busy up here in the Northern Hemisphere, but nothing too shocking or surprising showing up. Before I go, let's try and make sense of all the wet weather we just showed you for the islands. And the best way to do it is a seven day rainfall map because those lows, those showers, kind of hard to make sense of them. So what we look for on this map the purple area surrounded, uh, sorry, the purple area with the dark blue inside it. So that's what you see here around the Cook Islands. That's the heavy stuff. So the purple is 100 millimeters, dark blue up to 300 millimeters in the middle there. Most of that is south of Raro, so hopefully it's not too wet for you there. But that system is dragging in a lot of rain. Certainly it's going to be wet in Niue, wet around parts of Fiji. Tonga, though, might be in a bit of a bubble of dry. If you see the blue next to green, that's at the bottom end of the scale. So mostly dry with the green shading around you, might only be 10 millimeters or so, um, although the northern part of it could be a bit wetter. And then obviously that rain around Vanuatu and the Coral Sea, far north of Queensland area, worth keeping an eye on. Um, we're not saying a cyclone's forming, but I think as we go into March, that energy may well turn into a low, but it all depends on the high pressure belts further south, down around the Tasman Sea, the New Zealand area, that controls a lot of these lows. So while it's unusual to see so many low pressure zones in an El Nino summer, the reason why you're not seeing them all turn into cyclones is because the high pressure belt in New Zealand expands up and it kind of limits the growth of those storms. So keeping them as, uh, well, I shouldn't say storms, keeping them as low pressure zones and not as tropical cyclones, not for now anyway. So a lot of low pressure in the South Pacific for the next week ahead, but for now, no tropical cyclones on the horizon. That's all from me. We'll see you again one week from now.